Hello everyone, and welcome to part 2 of the Breath of the Wild cell shading tutorial series. Right now I'm loaded into the game again, so I can show you the next part we're going to be recreating. So, to start off, Breath of the Wild actually has a rim light that pops in whenever your camera is directly facing the world's main light source, which is essentially the fake light we had made earlier in Blender. And you can clearly see, there's a sort of outline that appears around Link, around the majority of his body which sort of implies that the light is sort of wrapping around. But when you turn the camera around, you can see that the rim light actually moves if you look on his arm right here. So let's go back into Blender and let's figure this out. Okay, so first things first, let's organize our current setup a bit so that way we can keep track of things even when the shader gets a lot bigger down the line. So let's take our current light direction setup and let's put that into a frame. Select everything and bring it down into the frame. And let's name the frame light direction vector. We can change the color too. Let's make it like a, let's make it like a greenish, greenish blue. And let's also add a frame for these nodes here. Let's name this, make it red first. Let's name this base world light. Now let's actually try to squish these nodes in together a little bit. Try to save up on some space because this shader is going to get big. Do that. Okay. And now that that's all cleaned up, let's take our sun here and hit Alt-R and let's rotate it 90 degrees so it's directly facing Link, just so that way we have a clear view of where the rim light should start and end. Okay, now let's go back to our material and let's take our light direction vector and put it into a multiply add node. Let's set this to negative 10,000 and add 1,000. Let's clamp it. Let's add another math node. Let's make this a multiply node. Connect our light direction vector to that as well. Make this negative one. Make sure that's clamped. And now we're going to subtract the two. We can unclamp that. So now what we've done is we've made a gradient here from the exact point where our sunlight stops in our base world light, and it extends that gradient all the way to the furthest point on Link's back where the sun can't reach. And now we're going to add a layer weight node, input layer weight, and let's connect our normal map to it. And this is basically saying that anything directly facing the camera is going to be black and anything at a glancing angle is going to be white. So we're going to take this and we're going to put it into a frame. Let's just name the frame layer weight. Let's make the frame uh, bluish, I guess. We'll stick that here. And now we're going to take that layer weight and we're going to multiply with what we have here. So let's add a new math node, set it to multiply, and connect the facing output from the layer weight into the multiply. And now we'll add another multiply add node. We'll set this to multiply by 10,000 again. Let's clamp it. And let's add negative 2,000. So now, this is looking pretty close to what we need. But when we turn the sun, it actually still isn't quite there just yet. So in order to fix this, we need to tell the shader that we should only activate this rim light 
whenever we are facing directly towards the sun and no other case. So in order to do that, we need to sort of make an on-off switch that basically says when I'm facing the light, it turns on. When I'm not facing the light, it turns off. So let's go back to our material. Let's add a vector transform node. We'll set this, keep it as a vector, switch this to camera, switch to world. We'll make the X and Y a zero and the Z a one. Now let's add a vector rotate node. Connect that to vector rotate. Switch this to Euler. Let's take our combine XYZ light direction node here and connect that to the rotation. Invert it. And then let's add in a separate XYZ. Now if we just look at the Z, you can see as I'm facing the exact direction that the sunlight's coming from, this is all white. When I go the exact opposite, it's black. So this is our on and off switch. Now let's take our new on and off switch. Let's add a frame. Put these nodes in the frame. Let's name this light direction camera space. Let's make this like a yellow. Let's also tightly pack these nodes in here. Shift that up a little bit. Now let's take this and multiply it with our current setup just before the multiply add node. Take the Z, take that and multiply. And now you can see this does what we need it to do. No matter what the sunlight direction is, it's going to do exactly what we need to do. Let's pack all of this into a frame. Let's squish it close together so we can save on space. Let's name this back rim light. Let's make this a dark red. Now let's add another mix RGB. Set it to multiply. Let's take our base world light. Let's connect that to the multiply node. And we'll take our back rim light plug that into the multiply. Let's add it to this frame actually. Now let's add a new value node. And we'll set this to the same value as our base world light. So now we have our back rim light. And you can see it behaves exactly the same. You can see on the shoulder here. When I start looking at it on this glancing angle, you can see the rim light start to creep up, which is exactly what we need. And let's actually go back to our material and sort of clean this up again. Make this a little neater. Put that right next to the base world light. Okay, and that's good. Now we move on to the next rim light. So the next rim light is actually a lot simpler than the one we just did earlier. Uh, I actually found this soup ladle here acts as a good reference for what I need to show you. So if you look at the bottom of the ladle, you can see a bright rim light that only exists on the part of the model that's lit by the fake world light. It's also worth noting that the back rim light we just made, even though it's basically an extension of the sunlight, it doesn't actually affect the new rim light at all. So you can see here when I rotate the camera, when that back rim light fades in, 
it actually doesn't extend the area that the new rim light is in. So you see the rim light's here, and it ends here, but when that back rim light comes in, it doesn't follow. So let's go into Blender and let's get this sorted out. Okay, so we are back in Blender in our material. Let's add a new math node. Let's change this to multiply add. And we'll connect the light direction vector Z output to it. Let's make this multiply by 10,000. And what did we do here? Uh, multiply by 10,000, subtract by 1,000. Negative 1,000, clamp it. And now let's copy this. We'll connect our layer weight facing to the multiply add node. Let's keep this multiply by 10,000. And let's bring this down. Negative 7,000 should be fine. Let's multiply these together. You turn off clamping. Now let's go back to the rest of our shader. Let's add a new mix RGB node. Set it to add. And we'll connect our setup here into the mix RGB node. You can see we have our rim light here. Let's just tone it down a little bit. So let's add in a new value node. Maybe make it a point 0.2. That looks good. Maybe 0.3. Yeah, okay. So now let's go ahead and stick this in the frames. So let's add a new frame. Get these as close as possible. Change the color, we'll make this a nice deep green. We'll name it Vector Sunlight Rim Light. Because the rim light only exists in the fake light, the vector sunlight. And now that's two rim lights done, and now there's one more rim light that we need to take care of. So let's go back to the game and check that out. So the last rim light we'll be adding is pretty much the same idea as the rim light we just made in Blender, but this time it's only present outside of the fake world light mask, and it's just a little bit darker. You can see it right here, right on Link's arm. However, when you orbit the camera around, you can see the rim light start to fade in and out. Now this is because the rim light actually uses that on and off switch that we made in Blender before. So the rim light is only active when you're facing the main world light. So now that we know that, let's go back into Blender and let's see if we can put this together. Okay, so we are back in Blender, back in our material. So let's add a new math node. Let's make this a multiply add node again. And we'll connect the light direction vector to it. Let's multiply this by negative 10,000, clamp it, and we'll add 1,000. So again, it's the same thing as our base world light, but a negative version of it. Now let's duplicate this multiply add node. We'll connect the layer weight facing output to it. We'll multiply this by positive 10,000 and subtract by 7,000, so put negative 7,000 in here. And now we're going to multiply the layer weight by the light direction camera space. And we can unclamp that. We're going to multiply this with the light direction vector. And then we can add a new mix RGB node. Let's set that to add. Connect that to the 
fact, we'll add a new value node. We'll make this a 0.1 and then we can connect the rest of our setup into this mix RGB node. And now you can see we have our final rim light added. So now that we know that this works, let's pack all this into a frame. And we will name this Fade Rim Light. Let's make this kind of a purple magenta. Again, let's sort of get these all packed together just for the sake of making things all neat and tidy. That looks good. Now that we've done that, that means that all three of our rim lights are done. That concludes part two, and in the next part we'll go over specular highlights. So I will see you guys in the next part.